This recession has not returned to us the disasters and the suffering of the beginning of 1933. Your money in the bank is safe, farmers are no longer in deep distress, and have greater purchasing power. Dangers of security speculation have been minimized. National income is almost 50% higher than it was in 1932. And government has an established and accepted responsibility for relief. I said in my message opening the last session of the Congress that if private enterprise did not provide jobs this spring, government would take up the slack. That I would not let the people down. We have all, all learned the lesson that government cannot afford to wait until it has lost the power to act. Therefore, my friends, I have sent a message of far-reaching importance to the Congress. I want to read to you tonight certain passages from that message and to talk with you about them. In that message, I analyzed the causes of the collapse of 1929 in these words. Over speculation in and over production of practically every article or instrument used by man. Millions of people, to be sure, had been put to work, but the products of their hands had exceeded the purchasing power of their pocketbooks. Under the inexorable law of supply and demand, supplies so overran demand that production was compelled to stop. Unemployment and closed factories resulted, hence the tragic years from 1929 to 1933. There were many reasons for this overproduction. One of them was fear. Fear of war abroad. Fear of inflation. Fear of nationwide strikes. None of these fears have been borne out. I repeated to the Congress today that neither it nor the chief executive can afford to weaken or destroy great reforms which during the past five years have been effected on behalf of the American people. In our provision for social security itself, the electorate of America wants no backward steps taken. Democracy has disappeared in several other great nations. Disappeared not because the people of those nations disliked democracy, but because they had grown tired of unemployment and insecurity, of seeing their children hungry while they sat helpless in the face of government confusion, government weakness, weakness through lack of leadership in government. Finally, in desperation, they chose to sacrifice liberty in the hope of getting something to eat. History proves that dictatorships do not grow out of strong and successful governments, but out of weak and helpless governments. If by democratic methods people get a government strong enough to protect them from fear and starvation, their democracy succeeds. But if they do not, they grow impatient. Therefore, the only sure bulwark of continuing liberty is a government strong enough to protect the interests of the people, and a people strong enough and well enough informed to maintain its sovereign control over its government. We are a rich nation. We can afford to pay for security and prosperity without having to sacrifice our liberties into the bargain. Between now and July 1st, 1939, 15 months away, the Treasury will have to raise less than a billion and a half dollars of new money. Let us unanimously recognize the fact that the federal debt, whether it be 25 billions or 40 billions, can only be paid if the nation obtains a vastly increased citizen income. We have at our disposal the national resources, the money, the skill of hand and head to raise our economic level, our citizens' income. Our capacity is limited only by our ability to work together. What is needed is the will. I never forget that I live in a house owned by all the American people. 
and that I have been given their trust. I try always to remember that their deepest problems are human. I try not to forget that what really counts at the bottom of it all is that the men and women willing to work can have a decent job, a decent job to take care of themselves and their homes and their children adequately. I believe that we have been right in the course we have charted to abandon our purpose of building a greater, a more stable, and a more tolerant America would be to miss the tide and perhaps to miss the port. I propose to sail ahead. I feel sure that your hopes, I feel sure that your help is with me. For to reach a port, we must sail. Sail, not lie at anchor. Sail, not drift.